How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing. Always protect your profits. And today we're going to be talking about ChargePoint. You guys know how much I like this stock for the long term. And I know it's been a while since I've given you guys an update. So you know I had to do a video for you guys. I won't waste any more time. Let's jump into the agenda. If you're new to this channel, I just want to let you know we have timestamps down below inside the description. But if you are a shareholder or you're thinking about taking a position, I highly suggest you watch this full entire video. So the first thing we're going to be going over is a technical analysis. We're going to be taking a look at support. We're going to be taking a look at resistance and where you can come up with a game plan if you plan to trade it for the coming week. We know there was a lot of volatility. It's pulled back quite a bit, so it's essential that you guys watch this portion. And then we're going to be going on Fintel, taking a look at the recent institutional ownership and as well as the short interest information. We want to know, does ChargePoint have short squeeze potential? We're going to find out. And then we're going to be taking a look at the order flow distribution where institutions loading up on shares on Friday we're gonna find that out as well because that's gonna be key because it will have an impact on the overall stock price and then when all of that is done we'll be going into the final thoughts and as well as some more key details that I want to share with you guys so we're gonna be doing a technical analysis for charge point let's see how it performed on Friday so we ended up closing the day at $21.26 being up 2.26%. On the low, it tested $20.76, and then on the high, testing $21.52. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, it traded at 4.376 million shares, and the average volume over 10 trading days being at 5.906 million shares. So we had a little bit below average, but due to the fact that EV stocks have been getting beat up quite quite a bit. It was great to see that ChargePoint ended up having a green day. When we take a look at our chart, we're using the one year daily chart. You can see from the RSI down below, we're right at 38 point five nine so yes we are in the oversold territory but as you can see it is curling up so let's get to the chart as far as for our moving averages we are below all three of them which is the 200 day the 100 day and as well as the 21 day ema and of course it's because it's been bearish for quite some time like i said evs have been getting beaten up but one thing we also have to take a look at is this 20 dollar level Anyone who believes in the long-term prospects of ChargePoint, I say, hey, as far as a starter position is concerned, if you can get in at $20 or below, that is not bad whatsoever. The last time we actually got into these particular levels was back in May, and we also we got even lower down to 1909, and this was back also in April. April. So taking this into consideration, I do see this as far as a long-term investment. You guys know that already on this channel. But as far as the technical setup is concerned, you want to look forward to seeing a strong movement and seeing a test for it to go to at least $22.50. I think this is very doable, especially going into next week. And considering where the price is right now, where it closed at $21.26, I think, hey, things are definitely looking good if you're looking for a short-term setup here. But one thing I wouldn't be too shocked about if we continue to see some consolidation and some support being built up in this area in regards to the high 20s because it did test 2076. And of course, it's been showing some strength there to hold itself up fairly well. So we're going to be taking a look at the recent institutional ownership and as well as the short interest information for charge point. So as we scroll down on the page, green rows indicate new positions while red rows indicate closed positions. So what we could see so far as of late, we have three closed positions coming from Jeffrey's Group LLC and as well as Bluefin Capital Management. But what we can see as far as new open positions, it is fairly significant. So there's a lot of institutional activity, most notable, we could see 1832 Asset Management that went in with just over 48,000 shares. And we have the Voya Russell ITM Mid Cap Index that went in with just over 19,000 shares. And keep in mind, even when 1832 actually got into their position, it was at a cost of $35.62. So take that into consideration. So now let's uh, take a look at the short interest information. So scrolling down the page, we see the short shares availability is at 750,000 updated 12 minutes ago. And the short ball free rate is at 0.88%. 
when we take a look at the history of the short volume ratio, we could see clearly for the close of the 18th, it was at 57.29. The close for the 19th, it was 45.99. And now the close for the 20th, which was Friday, it was at 49.09. So it creeped up a little bit. But what does this tell us? Yes, charge point does have short squeeze potential. So if we end up having a catalyst that ends up coming through the EV sector in an example would be the infrastructure bill, more progress in that regard, then of course you can see charge point to start taking off. But when you end up having low volume coming through this stock, you're going to continue to see a lot of pressure and as well as manipulation on the overall price. So whether your strategy is to go long or going short, or even if you're holding it for the long term, like myself, I feel like these particular stats that we just covered are one of the things you definitely want to be aware of so you have a good idea of overall market sentiment and what you need to look for in regards to economic conditions. Now let's take a look at the order flow distribution for charge point. So we can see here on the inflow it was 12,380 and then on the outflow it was 13,112 so we ended up having an outflow day. So on the large we had zero for both on the medium it was 5,383 and then on the small, it was 6,998. On the outflow side, on the medium, it was 5,391. And then on the small, it was 7,721. When we take a look at the large scale orders in the last five days, for August the 20th, on the Friday that just passed, we had zero. But we had big time outflows on the 19th and as well as the 16th. And we had zeros on the 17th and as well as the 18th. So taking a look at this data doesn't surprise me whatsoever. We saw a lot of outflows in the EV sector overall in general. You know ChargePoint is a very volatile stock. There's many who are trading it. And we, when you don't have a lot of volume coming through it, you're going to have some pressure on the overall stock price. So I want to make sure that's something you understand, especially if you want to have charge point in your trading strategy. A lot of it feeds off of speculation. So when that speculation is not there, you're going to end up seeing outflows and a pullback in the stock like you're currently seeing right now. So now let's jump into the final thoughts and as well as some more details. So for my final thoughts on charge point, there's one thing I want to bring to your attention here. We saw for quite some time, there was a lot of attention coming into the EV space due to the infrastructure bill. Now that that's kind of waned because you know what, it's going to take some weeks and possibly even another month before we get another update. Now we have outflows in the industry. It is no longer speculative like how it was before. So you're going to end up seeing a lot of stocks pull back. So instead of being frustrated or being concerned about this, if you want to get in at a lower cost average or get into a starter position, then I feel like it's worth an extra look. You want to take advantage of these outflows or these red days or corrections that you're seeing inside of the stock. This is the best time to buy because we could see on a consistent basis, charge point trades in its range. It was moving. It was at $25, $26. And I know many people who took advantage of those swing opportunities. If you're not trying to take advantage of those swing opportunities, that is perfectly fine. But one thing you have to understand, if you're holding shares long term, you shouldn't be concerned about this short term volatility. We've known they've also done some offerings inside of the past. And even at the current price of where it's at when they did their offerings, it's also higher. I think it was around the $23 range. So if you even buying right now, at least you know you're getting in at a price below a lot of institutions. But make sure you do your homework and as well as some more due diligence before you actually do this. Because it is going to take a quite a bit of time before a charge point actually becomes profitable. So I want to make sure I'm being very clear about that. So for anyone who is a value investor, this may not be the right play for you. This is all growth right here. And you're pretty much just betting on the fact that, hey, EVs are going to be the future. It's going to be the way going forward. And I just want to make sure I get my position in right now. That's the type of investment that charge point is. And it's part of the reasons why I have it in my portfolio. So if you're looking to actually get into charge point and you're only want to do it for the short term, then wait for that momentum to come back into EVs 
EV plays, infrastructure built, and so on, and then base your strategy off of that. And myself personally, I'm not a big fan trading in sectors where there's not a lot of big money flowing through it. Just from my personal experience, I find that works the best for me. So as far as charge point is concerned, I do like it for the long term at these price levels, but I feel like, hey, if you can get in at $20 or below, that is worth an opportunity of consideration if you want to have it inside of your portfolio. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll be talking real soon.